Engaging recognition investments. To what degree does your organization regularly celebrate team accomplishments? Recognize teams for effectively using project development tools. Recognize teams for impacting a variety of performance areas. Avoid recognition systems that promote a one winner, the rest lose feeling. Avoid recognition systems that focus on one measure at the expense of others. And then finally, do you seek team feedback to ensure that recognition is meaningful? Okay, so we have five ways to improve our recognition investment score. First, we want to celebrate regularly. Most people avoid celebrations because they think it takes too much time or that it costs too much or both. If you're creative, however, you can accomplish a lot with a little preparation and just a few dollars. The key is to use a variety of celebration events and to couple a lot of positive emotion with the process of eating, sharing, and handing out. Bringing in a little food sends a message of thought more than simply saying you were willing to spend that much on me. Do something. Failing to simply say thank you in a meaningful way can be your worst error. Think about it. How often has your boss thanked you for your work in a meaningful way? View the creation of your recognition system as something you'll do over time. Start simple. You can further enhance your formal recognition process as time goes on. Third, don't send negative messages. One way that we can design effective recognition systems is to learn to decipher the message that the recognition sends. Begin by ensuring that you aren't sending a negative message. We most often do this when one group or individual is recognized while others are ignored. Repeatedly using the same type of recognition or failing to match the degree of recognition with the significance of the accomplishment can also send a negative message. So if you've ever seen a spot reward program where it seems like people are getting spot rewards for doing their regular job, that's an example of a negative message being sent. Recognize balance over singular achievement. People do what gets recognized. If you recognize them for achieving efficiency goals, but you fail to do the same when a quality goal is attained, then they'll perceive that you care more about efficiency. Simple work systems can be designed to trigger recognition events when a variety of measurement goals are attained. Safety achievement is perhaps the only performance area that should be recognized and highlighted by itself. Finally, we want to ask for feedback and act on it. The best way to find out what is meaningful to your people is to ask them. They may say money as a joke or as a first response, but if you probe deeper with questions, you will most likely discover that they will like anything that makes their workday or workplace experience more desirable to be a part of. What are their engagement factors? Why do they work there? What do they want from the organization? What makes them feel jazzed about the organization? By creating ownership in the recognition process, you help ensure that people appreciate a milestone more when they reach it. Do your teams know they're appreciated? Do your teams feel like their efforts are appreciated? Or do they feel like the organization is taking advantage of them? The actual answer actually lies somewhere between these two extremes, but how would each team in your organization respond? As your teams realize success, the what's in it for me question will loom larger and larger. This will be especially the case when we place expectations on teams that are significant, and if the teams truly understand how their performance impacts the costs of the business. Recognition provides the motivation and incentive to work aggressively on each project. If the recognition process does not evolve over time as team success is realized, teams eventually become less motivated. Your project quality and throughput rates suffer. In other words, the satisfier becomes a dissatisfier and people only recognize it if it's taken away. A variety of recognition options exist, and there's a variety of good resources that can be referenced as you build your own list for use. 
The key to remember here is that the types of recognition you may use at first, such as plaques, thank you letters, certificates, and award dinners, lose their impact over time as successful teams receive them on a repeated basis. Be prepared to modify and enhance your recognition process as your teams mature. Recognize team maturation, for example. Many team processes have failed because the organization planned on using the same recognition process forever, so to speak. Avoid recognition systems that allow only one winner. All teams are winners in one way or another. Instead, recognize and reward all teams that meet or exceed a certain level of performance. Also, take care in deciding what you will recognize teams for. Ideally, teams should be challenged by a balanced set of performance measures. But unfortunately, many organizations either consciously or subconsciously, officially or unofficially, send the message that certain measures such as efficiency are more important than others. They do this by the way they recognize an individual performance. How do your people know what is important? Earlier in this course, you identified some possible team effectiveness measures. A great starting point for designing a recognition process can be found in these measures. For example, if time to market and organizational impact are two key team effectiveness measures, what types of recognition would be meaningful as teams become more and more proficient at performing in these areas? So as they improve their time to market for projects, as they increase the impact that their projects are having on the organization, what types of recognition is meaningful? Give strong consideration to involving your team members and leaders in the design of your recognition process. Finally, consider the potential value of profit sharing programs in particular, as these programs help everyone share in the success of their team and others in the organization. Profit share programs are also the best way to directly address the what's in it for me question. If you plan on driving up team effectiveness over time and keeping it at that higher level for years to come, you should expect to implement some form of profit sharing at some point in time. There are many possible designs for such systems in use today. It's just a matter of research, creativity, and a willingness to change. But as teams see how their contributions are impacting the organization more and more, they will eventually ask what's in it for me.